Okay, welcome back again. Third video for today. So the third video is going to be on writing project one, the guidelines. So go ahead and pull that up. If you're confused on where to find that, when you open up Blackboard, it's going to bring you to the announcements. It's going to bring you to this page. You'll want to click on course content, and then you want to click on week one, January 19th through 24th. Now this is assuming that you've watched all my other videos, which will be posted here. Uh, make sure you watch the videos first. Um, this should be the last video you watch out of the three that I posted of my videos. You should first of all watch the start here video, then you should watch the week one intro, and then watch the writing project one guideline outline, uh, guideline video. So that's this one. So go ahead and click on this. It'll open it up. I think I've opened it up twice now. So writing project one annotated bibliography. You probably did one of these in uh, English 101. If you were in my class, you did for um, part of another project. But the thing about this one is that this is a project all on its own, so probably going to be easier for you um, this this semester, um, especially if you've had me because you know what to expect. <coughs> but nonetheless, for this assignment, you construct and complete an annotated bibliography, which I'll explain how to do in the coming weeks. Um, we'll break it down piece by piece by piece. Uh, writing Project 2 is, now, the reason I say that, the reason I go on to Writing Project 2, Writing Project 1 is basically an extended works cited page. It's not an essay. It's just an extended works cited page to where you explain the sources you're using and how you're planning on using them. Um, writing Project 2 is going to be an essay. Writing Project 3 is going to be an essay. Writing Project 4 is going to be an essay. But Writing Project 1 is not. Okay, so make sure that's clear. Now the reason that I begin talking about Writing Project 2 now is because that this extended works cited page that you're about to make for Writing Project 1 is going to be the same works cited page that you use for Writing Project 2. So I want you to think about how you're going to choose your topic because this topic is going to be used in Writing Project 2. It's going to be the same topic. The topic that you choose for your works cited page now excuse me, is the same topic that you're going to use for writing project for the essay in writing project two. Okay? So the topic that you choose for your work cited in writing project one, same topic you choose you use in writing project two. Okay? So writing project two, not the one we're doing right now, but in the future, so that you can plan, writing project two will consist of a causal argument in which you argue the causation of a particular phenomenon. Basically you're creating a cause and effect relationship. If you think the cardinals where am I? I'm in Illinois. So our car you, you guys as Cardinals are doing good too. So if you think the Cardinals, well, let's, let's see. The Cardinals are doing good. Let's, let's just bear with me. Let's just pretend the Cardinals are doing horribly, you know, football team there. The Arizona Cardinals are doing horrible. Let's just say they are. I know they're not, but let's bear with me. Let's pretend Arizona Cardinals are doing horrible. Why? Why do you think they're doing horrible? They have a horrible coach. None of this is true, but whatever. <laughs> cause and effect relationship, what is it that you think that causes this team to be horrible? The coach. That's your cause and effect relationship right there. Um, in which you're interested. Now you can use anything. If you think that you, you want to go with gun control, what is it that causes this problem with gun control? Okay, if you think that that the social issue of, of banning guns is a bad idea, why do you think it's a bad idea? What do you think is causing that, that problem to happen? What is causing your social issue? Okay. Um, the main, <coughs> excuse me, the main task of the causal argument. So the main thing that you're doing in writing project two is just to establish a causal hypothesis. I think X causes Y. I think coach causes bad team. I think um, gun fanatics cause problems with gun regulation. If that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Where are we going from this? My distinguishing a causal argument is an argument which has a causal statement at the conclusion. Basically your essay, your second essay, well excuse me, your second project is going to end, your, your second project which is an essay, is going to end with basically this X causes Y. And you're going to prove all that. You're going to prove that X, X causes Y. X being the coach, Y being the crappy team. X causes Y. Crappy coach, crappy team. It is usually an in, um, inductive argument and where am I? Sorry, I can't see around my <laughs> can't see around my camera. My camera's in the way. It is usually an inductive uh, argument in that the truth of the premise does not guarantee the truth of the conclusion. Basically, what that means is you're talking about correlation here. Just because they have a crappy coach does not mean that that is the one problem 
that if you just change the coach, that they would just be a sparkling team. That is not what that means. You're picking one element, and you're saying that this is contributing to them being a crappy team. You are saying that smoking contributes to lung cancer. You're not saying that smoking is the single most cause, the only cause of lung cancer. You're saying that it's a significant one, okay? Um, so that's what it means by it, it's um, in, uh, inductive argument in which the uh, premise does not guarantee the truth. So this may not be the only reason why your problem exists, but it is a darn good reason as to why. For writing project one, your job, now we're back to writing project one. In the future, you're going to be doing all that. But right now, your job is to construct, construct a list of sources that you can use to make clear your cause and effect relationship. So if you're going to tell me that the crappy team is caused by the crappy coach, you're going to have to have some sources to back that claim up. If you're going to tell me that smoking causes lung cancer, you're going to have to have some evidence. That evidence has to come in the, in the form of sources. Outside sources, scholarly sources, journals, websites, magazines, whatever. You're going to need some of those. Okay, That's what we're doing right now. For this assignment, You'll take time to explore one cause and effect relationship that interests or bothers you. You conduct extensive scholarly research to fully explore this phenomenon. You write a three to four page annotated bibliography, not an essay, just an annotated bibliography. What that is, is a works cited page with a couple paragraphs for each citation. Uh, 900 words for each citation, as a matter of fact. Uh, excuse me, 900 words total <laughs> um, in MLA formatting. So. That means that if you have three sources, 900 words, each source is going to need about 300 words. Okay, Three paragraphs plus a citation, that's how you get to that three to four page. Um, let's see, the parts of the annotated bibliography, the summary, the assessment, and the reflection of the source. So you'll provide those three things and I will show you all this stuff. Um, but for right now, just know that those are the things you're going to have to do. You'll have to write a three to four page annotated bibliography of 900 words. You give me, let's say you were quoting Time Magazine. So you give me the citation for Time Magazine, I'll show you how to get the citation for that. You'll give me a summary. Basically summarize what, that's, what that article is about. What is this Time article about? Why am I using it? Here's what it's about. This Time article is about how lung cancer is, or excuse me, um, smoking is a significant cause of lung cancer. Cool. That's the summary. The assessment. How what part of this is important? Why is this important? To like, it talks about this, but how exactly does that help prove your point? And then the reflection, literally, what part of the essay are you going to use, and how are you going to use it? So, what what quote are you going to pull from there, or what what paragraph are you going to pull from there, and and why? And again, I'll go over this in just a few minutes. Um, so, you will use the CAC library in various online databases to find at least three relevant sources. Um, you'll document using MLA um, and, and making a works cited page. Here's all the things you'll need. And here's the breakdown of how we're going to do it. So this week, topic choice. Ask yourself, what cause and effect relationship am I interested in? Okay, Because you're using this annotated bibliography as a springboard into writing project two. So in three weeks, when we start writing project two, you want to have a pretty good idea about what you're talking about. Uh, because writing project two is a causal argument paper, it would benefit each student to choose a topic for writing project one that can flow into writing project two. Already talked about that. Um, so your topic choice, that's what we're doing this week. Next week, we're actually going to start on the works cited page. So you'll choose your three sources, and I'll show you how to do a works cited page, I'll show you how to cite, all that stuff. And also at the end of next week, which we'll talk about, is doing the summarization, the assessment, and the reflection. So we'll talk about all three of these, I'll describe them next week and we will do them next week. And then the final draft will be due the week after that. So this is really just a three week project, um, but that's because it's kind of a, a, a small project <laughs> and that gives us more time for the, for the later essays. So that is basically writing project one, um, just an annotated bibliography, not an essay, so to speak. I mean, it's 900 words, but uh, that's, that's not really all that much. It's two to three to four pages, but that's because you have to space it out and um, I'll show you all that stuff next week. So don't don't freak out because you see three to four pages. Um, your minimum is 900 words. I'll explain how that translates because it's you're, there's going to be a lot of spacing in that document. Um, but more or less, the thing you need, things you need to worry about right now, the rough draft is going to be due the 31st, and the final draft is going to be due the 7th. 
And for this week, you just need to come up with a topic. And I talked about that in my last video. Your topic, you'll um, submit that here, along with your week one discussion board. And make sure you don't forget the uh, to introduce yourself. And then let's get to know each other. So if you have any questions, as I always say, um, click on the instructor contact instructor tab here. My face, my email, my phone number. If that doesn't work, come to the announcements and look me up on Skype right here. So if there's any questions ever, you can use any of this information to get a hold of me. Um, or if that doesn't work for you, there's also the question where you, the general question for the course. You can post it there. I'll see it. I'll reply. And uh, hopefully I'll help. So hopefully this video has helped you figure out kind of what the class is going to be about. Uh, so if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. Otherwise, just make sure you watch all the videos and have a good, uh, good 16 weeks or however long this, this class is. Thanks.